Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. Well, who is Jesus? Because the world presents lots of different types of Jesus. But we know there is only one rescuer sent by God, and that is Jesus Christ the righteous. He's perfect. He doesn't sin. He is altogether lovely. Be saved. He wants your soul to be saved. And this can only happen if you put your faith in him. Excuse me. Faith to believe in him, to believe that what he said is true and that it will happen and that what he said ha has happened has in fact happened. And we know as Christians that that is the case. We know. I mean, we believe, but we also know because we believe. So when we believe, Jesus reveals these things to us. Jesus revealed to me that the Holy Bible is his word. His actual word that I could trust it. And once this entered into my heart, there was no going back. I knew that I had to share this word of God with people. I know that Jesus loves me. I know that I'm being hunted. I know that I'm going through trials and that my faith is being perfected. But I will not turn away from my Lord Jesus. I will not deny him. He's lovely. He's perfect. The one who comes to me I will in no wise cast out. That won't stop the demons trying. They keep trying. That's what they do. They try to cause doubt in the body of Christ. However they think it's available to them to do so. They're a dastardly crew. Let's face it. Now, it's often the case in the world we live in now. Today, right today. And it's nothing new. That we're being taught, and the younger generations, the poor younger generations, are being targeted. Little children. Right? They're being targeted. And they're being taught that evil things are actually good. Mommy and daddy have to go to work, so who's really there to tell them different? So they believe what the TV says. Many children are raised by the television. And we know Satan's behind that. They knew generations ago they were saying, if you let that TV into your house, you're letting Satan into your house. And they were right. Now look at the state of it. They're slaughtering the babies in the wombs of the women. Young women dressing up as whores, letting themselves go for less than the loaf of bread. Being used, discarded, and then on to the next fella, next whoremonger whose parents didn't tell him to keep it in his trousers until he could put a roof over her head and provide for a child that might come into the world as a result. Nowadays they're telling us that all sorts of deviant sexual relations should be accepted and that anybody that speaks out about them, well, they're just harmful. They're dangerous people, them. Because they could hurt people's feelings. Well, are, are we to tiptoe around paedophiles and murderers now as well? Oh, this is where the witch pipes up and says, "You don't put, the, uh, you know, the homosexuals in the same category as, as as murderers. You put sexual deviants in the same category as murderers. Yes, you do. That's what abortion is. It's murder." 
And what is it a result of? Sexual deviancy. Unwanted pregnancies, they call them. Family planning, they call it. Murdering their children in their own wombs. Because they've been led astray by mommy and daddy. Because the young lad was told, you've got to get a, a trade, you can't afford a child now. Look, I've got 800 euros in the bank, go get this baby aborted. I'll drive you there. This is the level of parenting now. These are the standards that they aspire to. This is what they call good now. This is their principled argument. We're living in that day where that which is evil is being called good. And that which is good is being called evil. Because young men can't keep it in their trousers. Because they're being encouraged to go and sleep with this one and that one and the other, the other one. Everybody gets their turn on everybody else. Everybody knows everybody else. How do you think the Lord views this? I can tell you now he's angry. He's angry with the wicked. The Bible says he is angry with the wicked every day. Just because you have an urge doesn't mean it's right. The dog has an urge and he humps the leg of the table. Does that make his urge right? I mean, clearly it's not. So just because you have an urge doesn't make it right. Right? So we as men, we have to rise above the human condition of fallen nature, seek our Lord for his counsel. Turn to him. Get ourselves and bring ourselves to the foot of the cross. Rise up above our humanity and seek spiritual things. Be men. Not mere men, but men of God, men of his spirit, men of his counsel. Humble, meek, harmless, guileless, but not stupid and not cowardly. Afraid to speak out in case somebody comes along, the popo come along and grab your sign and put you in a van. Come on, folks. Where, where are the, the men who would speak out? Not so long ago. Men would say, look, I don't agree with what you're saying, but I'd fight for your right to be able to say it. Nowadays, nowadays they're saying, oh, you can't say that. <gasps> That's harassment, alarm and distress. You're causing me saying that. Talking about abortion. And all of this nonsense. And then you might get the pretendy voice of reason. Oh no, there's a time and a place. In fairness. When is that time and place? On the way out of the abortion clinic? After having killed the baby? Or at the dinner table? So where's that time and that place? Men. Where is it? When do you teach your son that he needs to feed his children, not slaughter them? When do you teach your young lady that she should respect the body that the Lord gave her? When does her mother come along and say, look, you need to find a man who's going to provide for you? 
men should be told, look, you can't get involved with a woman until you can provide for her. You can't touch them. Court them? Yes. Become fiancé? Yes. You can even do that. But you cannot touch her so to bed her, to lay with her, to know her, until you can put food on the table for a child that might result Otherwise, how can you call, call yourself responsible? But somebody who speaks out against such things and wants to teach and publicly discuss such matters gets jailed for antisocial behaviour? What kind of a society are we living in? A free demo democratic one? Where you have a right to express your opinions and beliefs? Convictions? What is this snowflake generation that have caught, have turned the Garda uh, Shiakana into a personal Rottweiler to scare away the bad guy who's speaking out against what I don't want to hear and what I want to do. I don't want to hear him speaking out against what I want to do. No, no, no. Anybody who's speaking out against what I'm doing that I know I shouldn't be doing, please remove them. That's antisocial. What a state of decay this society is in. And they call it a free country. Free to make a mess. Free to slaughter your child. Is that what they call liberty on this island now? That's not something that anybody should construct a society upon. The family unit should be prioritised. The welfare of the family unit. Not how many times you can enter e e um, empty your testicles in a weekend. Where are the men? Because all I see are grown up boys who don't know how to behave. The measure of a man is not what he can bench press. Or how many people he can beat up who are smaller than him. That's a coward. So it's time to be Irish men and prioritise what's important. I'm not saying all men are the same, but what we're teaching, what we're allowing to go out on our media, I, mean, I can't control that. But you can control what they're watching. Watching. No, I can't really. They have their phones nowadays. They go into the library and get internet. But you can educate them from when they're this size so that they can know that this is wrong. And at least you've done that then. Because this society that we live in is saying that it's wrong to, to expose evil. And it's calling evil good. So when are you going to man up? Men of Ireland. You'll stand shoulder to shoulder and say you'll answer Ireland's call, but why aren't you? Why aren't you? Lock them down in the house. Wear the mask. How's that answering Ireland's call? Fear mongering. That's answering hell's call.